in any city, in any country. Go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get to. When you reach the front desk, cover your ears and ask the worker to see the one who calls himself the holder of nature. If you don't cover your ears, pray to any and every god you know for relief of what comes next. The worker will stand to begin yelling in an unknown language, in a voice more filled with evil than Satan or any of his demons in his legion. To hear his voice clearly would corrupt your mind instantly, leaving you to suffer a pain far greater than the fires of hell for the rest of your life. Even with your ears covered, your head will feel as if it were in flames, whilst the worker speaks his evil tongues. When he is finished, wait ten seconds before uncovering your ears, for evil still lingers in the air. After ten seconds, uncover your ears and put your hand to your forehead, saying, In the beginning. As you finish saying this, the worker will open his mouth and a portal will appear. Should you step through this portal fearfully, he will close it when you're only halfway through, trapping your soul in the dark abyss that connects the dimensions for all eternity. If you make it through safely, though, you will find yourself in a garden. A garden more beautiful and lush than any forest or jungle known to man, demon, and angel. The garden seems to stretch on into infinity, and in front of you, you will see a path. Follow it, but do not stray. For if you do, the beasts of the garden will attack and begin to slowly tear the layers of your body off over what seems to be an eternity, and you'll be conscious for it all. After what may seem anywhere from five minutes to five months of walking, you will come upon a quaint home. Knock on the front door, and if you should hear a voice saying, You are not welcome here, stranger. There is no hope for you. No praying will save you here. Your death will be horrible. If you hear a voice saying, Please, come in. You may open the door and go in. He has welcomed you. Inside, you will see an old man in a rocking chair, reading by the fire. He will only respond to one question. What started it all? The man will begin to change his shape right in front of you. The wrinkles on his face and arms will begin to fade, and his muscles will begin to take shape, as if he were getting much younger. He will stand and ask you to come to him. Don't. As much as he may tempt you to do, do not. When he asks you this, stare directly into his eyes, and without breaking eye contact, inquire once more. What started it all? Once you say this again, the fire will jump from the fireplace and surround the man. He will begin to speak, in a voice as loud as the roaring sea, yet as soft as a gentle breeze. He will explain the beginning of life, the objects, and all of the universe. When he is finished, the fire will reside, and the man will be gone. In his place will be a marble on the floor. This marble is as red as fire, yet as blue as the sea, as clear as the wind, but as black as the earth. Do not try to comprehend this marble for it will twist your mind into madness. Pick up the marble and leap through the door you came through, and you will be back at the main lobby of the institution. The marble is Object 64 of 538. You control the elements now. <laughs>
I like it better this way. And this way, I wouldn't have to tell her how I felt. My black suit had gotten weary from the rain, so we both took shelter within each other. Just an excuse to hold each other, I suppose. I noticed her slender but sharp lips quivering as harsh cold winds impale our wet skin. Waiting for this opportunity, I kissed her. I know she was doing it purposely. She knows me too well. She knows she can easily consume me as I consume her, but I will not let her. Savouring her taste, our lips locked as if it was the end of everything, as if it was the end of everything worth living for. Breaking the unawkward silence, my dark mistress directed a message towards my heart. Tell me, tell me if I'm yours. Hadn't she done this before? My dark mistress likes to play mind games with me. Has she no recollection? That ungrateful bitch. I tell her not to ruin this perfect night. I tell her that I am a son of the moment and that I cherish each living current second. She thinks too much. Why does she have to take everything literally? She had done this to me last time and my heart was blackened. She thinks she is safe in this hidden in cave full of degenerates. I hope she doesn't think I'll protect her. Beneath the rustled up coffee shop where we stand, two drunk fellows from the block start to scrap. Drunken fury, I called it. The fellow in the black jeans punches the black eyed skin head. The old familiar sound of fist bones clashing against cheekbones. The gasp and the crackling pain, followed by the crunch of bones shattering and the squish of blood filling the newly torn gaps. My dark mistress gasped at the atrocity. Unbeknownst to her, this was the reality of things. This is how we ran things in this incav, without a second reason or thought. We resort to our most primitive beings. We find it works most efficiently. Has she felt the reality of things? I now hope realization has hit her. I am Alpha. I fucking own her. No more will the dark mistress control me. I hold her tighter so she would have the illusion of being safer in my arms. I grasp onto her more tightly as each shattering blow incurred. Get me out of here. If you loved me, you would get me out of here. Why the fuck are we still standing here? My dark mistress yelled and yelled. Who the fuck says I love you, bitch? Stand and watch. Get it through your thick head. I'm not the same person I used to be. I've changed. As each deafening blow, as each suffocating miserable drop of blood falls. I'm going to make you watch it. I throw her up against the coffee shop walls. Now listen here you. I've got money. I've got unaccountable whores waiting to fuck me. Why'd you come back? Just understand it. Faith. Curiorating. Stop! My dark mistress's name, Faith. A coincidence? I don't think so. <laughs> Just a sign from God himself for trying her as a metaphor in my life. Abandoned by faith many times. I've loved faith. I've fucked faith many times. <laughs> See? It just keeps and keeps on going. Stop! I've lost faith. My dark mistress with her still green sapphire eyes. She revitalizes me. I will never go wrong with her by my side. Society is afraid of her. Society will not rip me apart if she protects me. She has rescued me from animalism. Stop! My heart shakes and revolts against the sound of her voice. Why do I start weeping? Why has she left me with no choice? I said fucking stop! Stop! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this collaboration with Ghost Paul. He's still pretty new to YouTube, so check out his channel, subscribe, like, share and comment on his videos. He has some great content, so I will leave a link to his channel in the description below. We also did a video for his channel as well. I will leave a link to his video in the description below. If you have any creepy stories of your own, or of any topics that you would like me to cover, feel free to send them in via any of my social media. You can find all links to my social media in the description below. So until next time guys, make sure you lock your doors, stay safe and I'll see you next video.